Hello everyone and how are you doing? So this is a uh, devlog on the process I've been making and the progress I've been making using uh, GDevelop. So I actually come from Unity and Construct3. I love those engines and I use those engines as well. But I just wanted to use something that's basically free and see how I can get my hands on this. So this is my second uh, devlog. I've worked on this for two weeks. So this is my third week using um, G develop. So I'll just go ahead and click on the preview. So I'll just take us through a walkthrough of some of the uh, progress I've made over here. So I'll just go ahead and I'll magnify that. So first, I have actually uh, set up the camera system that um, sets the bounds. So we actually have uh, forced to bound this game right here. So uh, this screen has some bounds to it. So I'll just go ahead and walk around. So here we can actually see we have a uh, an object I can push around and I also have uh, scene transitions so that's not the uh, smoothest push around you can see but it needs a little bit of uh, <laughs> work to get that going but it's along the way now uh, another thing I actually did was to spawn these enemies and so if I left click I can spawn these enemies but apart from that I've actually created a random uh, audio setting and you can actually hear the enemy death kind of like uh, different. So if I just one, one, two, three, and four, it actually creates random enemy death sounds. Let's go ahead and just listen to that. Alright, cool. So uh, next, we actually have a patrolling enemy. And actually go ahead and get to this chest. So if I press the up arrow key, if I go in, it blinks once. I press up, we hear an audio, and I can actually see it spawns an object. Like so. Like that. So let me just go ahead and restart this. Alright, so let's just go ahead. Also, for the uh, health, I'm trying to integrate a health system where I have a circular health system. So I think that might be something I implement. So I'm um, yet to implement because I have them here. Let me just go ahead and bring up my sticky notes. I can just drag that over to the screen. So these are some things I've tried to implement. So I'm trying to do a ranged enemy attack. Basically, if I go under this uh, enemy, like the bee uh, patrolling enemy, I should be able to, uh, the enemy should spawn uh, some like projectiles when I go under uh, that enemy. So that's uh, those are some of the things I want to implement as well. So uh, I also want to create a dialogue system. There's the yarn dialogue system which is actually very good so I'm actually going to jump on that as well I'm also trying to implement a room system basically the player can teleport within the same scene rather than loading scenes all the time so basically what I'm trying to say is uh, if I have a uh, section so let's just say I have another section of this level or say the um, character enters into this house here I can actually have the character be teleported into the house and we can teleport out back into the scene rather than loading a couple of scenes. I believe that's more memory uh, efficient. So next we have a particle system that spawns leaves. So this actually adds a uh, kind of like nice effect to the level. That we see that leaf we're spawning over there as well. So also we can actually see we have a scene fader. If I actually go across the scenes there's a fader for each of the uh, sections for the scene. Basically a fader for the screen. So I'll just go ahead and jump back here. So if I'm in collision with this object here, I call fader, the scene is going to fade out. Right, so that's a simple tween. And I'll jump into the uh, script and actually show you how we uh, I made that one. So moving on, what else do we have? So we have a key system here. If I pick this key and I go towards this door, the door is actually going to uh, open, right? So, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and turn that off and not click, pick the key. So I'll just walk over and not pick the key. Just walk over here. Jump over. I'm not going to pick the key, but I'm just going to walk straight down here, and the door isn't opening. <laughs> Although I can actually walk through it, but it's not opening. So it's just a uh, walk in progress just to show you that. So I need to pick the key for that to work. So basically that's the uh, quick stuff. Like visually, that's what I've been able to do. So let me just go ahead and jump into the magic section. 
basically the uh, code. So let's go over here. And now the um, camera system, I have about three camera systems. Let me just go ahead and show you real quick. So if I jump right here, I'm actually using one called the Enforce Camera Boundaries. And let me just go ahead and show you what I mean. Which also reminds me of another uh, update I did. So if I press right click, it's actually going to show the, you know, those bounds. So here is a collider, this bluish collider that's actually blocking our scene. And this is the section where I'm colliding with that turns on the scene fader. And that's just set to trigger once. And the scene fader is actually a uh, an object, just a big black object like so that I tween whenever the character is in collision with that. So let's go ahead and see that real quick. So I think I call that a uh, scene fader. I'm just trying to zoom in. So basically if my player is colliding with the uh, transition, I call that uh, transition, which is this red component over here. This one right here, it's called transition. If my player is colliding with transition, it's going to create the object fader at the origin, which is zero, zero and it's going to change the width and height of the fader. And basically it's going to twin that using a uh, sign easing. So these, this is the actually twin, it's actually twinning that and it's twinning the opacity, right? So it's going to twin the opacity to zero using that uh, ease in. So that's what we're doing to uh, about this fader. That's what hap what's happening. So for the camera system, like I said, I have more than one camera system and this is just to you know test how I want that to uh, the scene to feel. So another thing I'll actually quickly want to show you is that I have uh, another boundary on the layer and I've hidden them. So if I open this up, this is what's making the, uh, let me just go ahead and close this. This is what's making our player stay to this bound. This is just an object. Let me just go ahead and drag it. So this is uh, basically an object that has the width and height of the project. So roughly, roughly about 320 by 180, but this 317 by 172. But the object itself, that's the width and height of the object. I just created that in Photoshop and cut the center and I call this center cam. So basically center cam is what I'm using to bind my player. If my player is colliding with center cam, then set the width to this guy. So let's go ahead and just see that over here. So I think I have that and just quickly scroll over to where I have that. Uh, here. Okay, good. So there is it. So if my player is in collision with center cam, I'm going to enforce the camera boundaries to center cams bounding box left, right, top and bottom. So it's going to just frame our bounding box. So that's why I said I have uh, multiple cameras. If I disable this, right? So this is disabled right now. So I'm no longer using this uh, bound type camera. So I'll just go ahead and drag this and just place it over here. And I'll open up my layers and hide the layer I call boundaries. So I'll just hide that or I'll just go ahead and leave it. Another thing I actually did is to, uh, let's go ahead and click preview. If I press the uh, right click button, I can actually see the uh, boundaries right now I've set. And you can actually see we're no longer using that. So we can actually see this external uh, area right here. So which takes me to the second uh, camera. So I have this other camera here that is using these collisions, right? So it's basically like the, uh, it's using the boundaries as well and force with boundaries, but it's using this called the top boundary, bottom boundary, left boundary, like so. This one over here, left boundary, and it's doing the same thing. So I'll just go ahead and uh, enable that by pressing D. So I'll just go ahead and go uh, save this and I'll play that as well. So you can actually see it's keeping our player within that uh, boundary. So it's doing uh, pretty much the same thing, but it's not giving us that uh, snap we have like in you know, classic uh, 2D games. So we're not getting that uh, snap. So that's this uh, camera. So the other camera I want to show you as well. So let's go ahead and uh, disable this one. So this is using a uh, lerp, right? So I'm lerping here. So I'm setting my own custom lerp. And at the same time, I'm using the enforced camera boundaries and I'm using the top boundary bounding box and setting this to zero. So basically this is what I'm doing here. 
So let me just go ahead and play that real quick. So here I'm actually setting my own derp. So we can actually see this uh, movement like so. like that so that's the uh, lerp we're actually having over here so that's this uh, camera boundary that I'm setting over here so I'll just disable this one and disable this as well and I'll just go ahead and use this one where my player is colliding with the center cam now on the player object itself, I'm using a custom behavior for the camera follow. So I'll just go ahead and drag that and I'll show you the custom behavior. So I'll click on the player and go to behaviors. And right here, I'm using the platformer behavior. So it's called smooth camera, but it has a uh, platformer behavior attached to it as well. Smooth platformer camera. And this is what's following our player. Right, so I'm not doing the lerping myself, and I'm doing a follow on x axis as well. So, this oh, this camera doesn't do the uh lerping, so I'll just go ahead and let me just get this out the way and kind of like just drag that and get that out of the way because I don't like uh the sign kind of like the tweening going on there. So, this is us doing our own tweening as well. Now for debugging, because sometimes I notice I need to get access to the collision when the game is running. So what I did was to just create a nice um, effect that shows the collision of the game when it's uh, running. So this is what shows when it's running. So we can actually get rid of that. So if I press 1, 2, get rid of it, gets rid of it, and if I press 1, we can actually see section like so so you can see those collisions and this is very good for debugging and you know seeing things and you know seeing your collision centers and it also has the text as well so I'll just show you quickly how I uh, set that one up so I'll just jump over here and I think I should call that debug or something so not this one Okay, yeah, so this is toggle debug. Basically, if I'm pressing the number one key or the numerical key one, it's going to enable enabling debugging view of the bounding boxes. And if I open this up, it has some toggles here. So if I want to get rid of the point names, I'll just say no. If I want to show the custom points, I'll leave that. So uh, yeah, so enable debug draw, that's also there. And also show collisions for hidden objects. So I'll just, if I click OK and run that, it's going to give us that uh, information as well. So for the crate, what I did is to uh, check if the player is colliding with the uh, box. And if I'm pressing the right key, it's going to simulate we're pressing uh, right. And I learned this from uh, Wishforge. Very good, awesome GDevelop tutorials. So uh, if you're not following uh, Wishforge, please go ahead and follow that guy. Very, very good, useful uh, GDevelop tutorials. Now for the chest, let's go ahead and actually look at the chest and see what's going on over here. I'll hide my boundaries because I don't want them to interfere, which uh, sometimes GDevelop, it's difficult to select things, especially when you layer things over. So what I actually just did was to create a layer so I could just hide that layer. So right now I'll be selecting the uh, center cam object. But if I go ahead and hide the boundaries, I won't be able to select that. So I have a, uh, a sprite here with an animation I downloaded. Just the sprite, I didn't need the animations. And basically what I wanted to do is to flash when the player is colliding there. And if it's colliding there with this chest and you press the up arrow key, it's going to open and then spawn a carrot. So uh, it's also going to play a sound. So basically I said, if the player is colliding with the arrow, it's going to make the arrow blink for 0 0.5 seconds. Now blink is another uh, external plugging. So let's just go ahead and select that. And if we look at our behaviors, there's, uh, sorry, it's called flash. And it's going to flash for 0 0.1 seconds. So it's an external uh, behavior. And to do that, you can just click on edit behavior as you search for new behaviors. And you just type the name of the behavior you're looking for. It's called flash. It's over here. You can just install it and then you ha can have access to that behavior on the editor. So that's what's making the arrow blink. And also, I'm also checking if the player is in collision with the arrow and 
the up key is pressed so it's going to set the chest animation to one now if i go back to the chest the chest itself has some animations on it so it has one called closed and it has one called open and the animation has a number one so basically what we're doing is setting it to one which is open that's just what we're doing there on the logic so we're sending that to open and then we're setting the opacity of arrow to zero so basically it's going to uh, go away when we are actually uh, we've opened that uh, chest so that's how i've set up the chest now for the gold key what we've done with the gold key is to check if the player is in collision with the gold key it's going to play a sound it's make, going to make the gold key flash or blink for one second we're going to wait one second we're going to delete that key and we're going to change the global variable of key and set it to one now the reason why we're doing this is that uh we're checking to see if we have actually gotten the key if we set the gold key to one we can actually make sure that the global variable of gold key if it's greater than one which means we have the key then it's going to change the animation of the door itself and then it's going to uh, get rid of a uh, collider I have on the door it's going to play a sound and it's going to stop the sound on a channel right so basically that's what I'm doing here basically I'm just stopping the sound on a channel and you can quickly uh, stop the audio file on the channel as well and once we've done that as well if the check open of our chest is one basically I have a uh, variable called chest open on the uh let's go ahead and open that object and go to variables we can actually see we have a variable here which is a number called check open and we've actually set that to zero so if the variable of check open is one we're going to create this right here and we're going to hide our arrow and we're going to play a sound so variables are really uh, important right here and that's happening we're setting check open to one here if our player collides with it so that's how i kind of like set this up i'll have this project linked up when i'm done i'll just have the whole project you know uploaded so anyone can have access to it modify it learn from it and play uh with it like there and for the current object i'm spawning it at a position that's slightly above and to the right of the chest so basically it's just positioning that's why i have plus 10 pixels and i have minus 20 pixels just to you know drag it up a little bit so uh yeah so let's go ahead and uh kind of like show that so basically i'm hiding these bounds when i press right click we've actually seen that as well so what i've also done is whenever the game is starting i like to reset some of these global variables so we can just have them to default and another thing as well is to set the window size to 320 by 180 each time it starts and i'm also restarting the game when i press the r key to quickly you know start up a scene so uh so we have our animation which we've done earlier on so we actually have our enemies right here and we have our enemy slug movement basically if our player enemy is colliding with the left symbol that's basically here just go ahead and drag that if it's colliding with this switch it over to the right if the enemy is colliding with this switch it over to the left now for the b i'm using an extension and let's go ahead and see that extension let's just open that up so it's called timed back and forth uh, mirrored movement so basically what's going to happen is the enemy is going to flip after it has moved left for a few seconds at a particular speed in pixels per second with its movement set to a time in seconds and we can use this for platforms basically not just an enemy i could just have an object and add the timed back and forth movement to that object and that object is going to you know start moving for instance let me just go ahead and set this here and add the uh let's say uh timed back and forth movement okay this is not going to uh, work on our uh, object here so basically i set that on the enemy so let's go ahead and see that and it has to be facing left i think it's based on the uh, uh, type it needs a different uh, type so that's why but if i open up the enemy like i said we can actually see the behavior on the enemy and it's activated and we can actually switch this to make the enemy move in a vertical direction once we have this toggle uh, set on so basically that's just a uh, rough uh, overview 
of what I've been able to uh, kind of like uh, work with when I'm uh, working with GDevelop. So uh, if you actually like this and you want to uh, kind of like, you know, have some suggestions or some comments and uh, feel free to uh, kind of like, you know, hit me up on the comment section and I'll be free to and I'll be quick to respond. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Helper Wesley from the GDevelop team. Very good, awesome tutorials. I've been learning a lot from that. Also, like to give a quick shout out to Wishforge Games. If you're not following these guys, you really need to follow them because you're going to learn a lot from them as well. So, apart from that, I also try a, do a lot of trial and error, and I fail a lot. And uh, yeah, so basically, uh, that's it. So, thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next devlog, where I would hopefully, hopefully implement some of these items I've had on my sticky notes on implementing a room system, game pads, joystick controls. I also have a flower enemy and then the B enemy is going to be shooting projectiles once I'm in range. And basically I put learn from construct here because I use construct as well. And I've also transferred some of my construct skills 